various kids over the years have spent time in jail, you know, ruining them records, it kind of puts a little damp on their future. Mm. You know I mean, for, for a joint, you know? Mm. So, so I don't agree with that. Now, the row, a row over the use of medical cannabis has caused division in the government and reignited the wider debate over drug legislation in the United Kingdom. The Home Office has set up an expert panel to review medicinal cannabis, but despite calls from campaigners and politicians, including former Conservative leader William Hague, the government insists it will not consider legalising recreational use. The current debate was sparked by the confiscation of the cannabis oil needed by 12-year-old Billy Caldwell. As a result, he suffered a series of extreme epileptic seizures. The case galvanised public opinion and the legislation of cannabis will be discussed by a symposium in Westminster tonight. One of our guests tonight is Damien Marley, a renowned reggae artist in his own right and the son of Bob Marley. The video for his recent single, Medication, was filmed at his cannabis farm in California, which he co-owns and which produces cannabis oils, extracts and other products for medicinal use. 29 US states, including the capital, Washington DC, allow recreational or medicinal cannabis use, often both. Uruguay and Portugal have decriminalized cannabis, and Canada is set to become the first G7 nation to follow suit. Critics are fiercely opposed, saying the legislation debate underplays the link between cannabis and psychosis, and that its toxic side effects are rarely discussed. You cannot guarantee how each individual person's brain is going to react to cannabis. And therefore, our experience is to look at the broader picture, and the broader picture is who are the lives that are impacted by the use of drugs and the normalisation of drugs like cannabis. I myself took part in an approved experiment with cannabis, skunk and a placebo. I had no problem with the placebo and the pure cannabis. The genetically enhanced strain, skunk, proved an absolutely terrifying experience in which I lost all sense of who I was. Absolutely terrible. I mean... We can stick it out in Gaza, we should be able to stick it out in a bloody scanner. I have smoked cannabis, but this, this was aggressive filth. This was something which did something. This robbed me of my persona, of my persona, of my soul. Cannabis is the most widely used substance in the United Kingdom, with approximately 2.1 million people using it in the last year. 94% of cannabis seized was of the high potency variety. There is a fourfold risk of schizophrenia and other psychosis related outcomes for the heaviest users. Cannabis could be to blame for one in seven cases of schizophrenia and other mental illnesses. Well, earlier I spoke with Damien Marley, who was joined by Frank D'Ambrosio, one of the USA's most vocal advocates for medicinal cannabis policy reform. I asked Damien, why he thought cannabis should be legalised for recreational use in the United Kingdom? Well, because I, well, one of the reasons is because I use it, you know what I mean? So, so it's something that I don't think I should have to worry about the law being on my back for a joint. You know I mean, various kids over the years have spent time in jail, you know, ruining them records. It kind of puts a little damp on their future, mm. you know what I mean, for, for a joint, you know? Mm. So, so I don't agree with that. But what do you say to those who say that the difficulty is that when, it, particularly when it's adulterated, and we're talking about skunk, mm -hmm. then it has serious psychotic um, potential. Well, I think that with it becoming legal, it's even better because you are, it's regulated properly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's grown in a clean way. It doesn't have pesticides. And for example, in California and other places, when you get the packages, it, it tells you how much THC percentage, so you can kind of gauge for yourself how strong of a dosage you personally need or can handle, mm -hmm. you know? So I think with, with it becoming legal, it's, it's more transparent in that, in that manner rather than just buying something from off the street where you don't know where it's coming from. Dr. Ambrosio, what do you say to those who say, I'm sorry, but this medicinal use is all very well, but it's the top of a slippery slope? It, it is a slippery slope, there's no question, but do I Do you think mind it being a slippery slope? As long as we slide into more medicine. I mean, I think that it, every substance that's out there, mm. every medicine that we have has side effects. Mm. Every single 
packaging that you have of Viagra, of mm. hypertensive drugs, of opioids, they all have side effects and they can all lead to death. But the difficulty here is that the psychotic effects can be very, very bad indeed. The data points to the fact that there is an association between cannabis and psychosis. Mm. It also says there's no causal mm. relationship. And there very well may be, maybe the data someday mm. will point to that. The data also says that mm. only one in 57,000 mm. people who use cannabis have mm. had a psychotic event. And it also says that the majority of them mm. have a history in their family or personally of mm. schizophrenia. At the end of the day, it's like putting a warning label on your cigarettes. Right. But I, I mean, the difficulty is I went in for a regulated test um, to see the effects of cannabis, skunk, and a placebo, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, when I tried skunk, oh, well, I want to show you what happened. It was pretty grim. One, two, three, four. This, this was aggressive filth. This was something which did something. This robbed me of my persona. Well, What's your reaction? I, well, watching, well, seeing what, first of all, that the, the device of how you inhale it and all mm -hmm. of that, then that's a very strong way to, to take it in in the first place. Vapor. And yeah. So if you're trying something for the first, for example, if you are trying a drink for the first time, I wouldn't recommend that you have a half bottle of scotch. Perhaps you have a beer. Is that what I did? Well, in some way, perhaps. Three, three bottles. Three bottles. You know what I mean? In some way, perhaps, especially as someone who's inexperienced with it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that perhaps you, you would try it that way. But in a sense, drastic though it was, it illustrated truth that it had the potential to do what it did to me. There's no question. I, I, again, I got here a week ago to the United Kingdom, and I was the first time I heard the word skunk. And so I'm trying to figure out what skunk is. Is skunk hmm. just the high-potency THC well, the, you, cannabis? Well, you touched on the absolute... This is the essence of the whole problem. We don't know what cannabis is when it turns up on the street. Is it skunk? Or is it pure, unadulterated, what you're growing on the farm? Right, exactly. And again, that's why um, having it legalized in any farm helps to regulate all of that. You know what I mean? It, help, it helps to, to sieve through all of that. But, you know, at the, as things stand at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, certainly in this country, they're not going to legalize it. They might do it for medicinal purposes, mm -hmm. but not for recreational. And they won't change it. And, and as a result, you will get skunk on the streets, which is capable of destroying a person's personality. I mean, you know, so is shellfish. You know, people can, people have, can have an allergic reaction to shellfish, so it's not for everyone. Everyone might not have a positive reaction. But like I say again... But, but you could draw the line at medicinal, and you could say, yeah. what, what you're doing is that's cool marvellous, too. growing this stuff for oils and the rest is perfect, mm -hmm. but in a recreational... And that's cool. I mean, if in, even countries have the right to have their opinion. If, if you don't, you know, if it's, it's cool, that it's not, it wouldn't be recreational. That's, to me, it's much more of a victory to have it for the medicinal purposes. You know what I mean? As a recreational user myself, I would love if it was mm. legally, you know, mm. le re recreationally legal. But so, in, so you are driven by wanting to ensure that the medicinal benefits of cannabis mm -hmm can be recognised, can be sanctified, can be legalised. Yes, it's, and it's more important than the recreational side of it to me. Uh, where are you with recreational cannabis? Well, from, as a, from a libertarian standpoint... No, from a doctor's standpoint. From a doctor's you are the doctor. I am a doctor, there's no question <laughs> about that. From a doctor's standpoint, inhaling burnt carbon fibres into your lungs intuitively is not a great way to go. However, at the end of the day, the THC, the CBD, all the phytocannabinoids, all the chemicals in that plant has been shown to work with our endocannabinoid system and heal people. Well, you come here from time to time. Do you think Britain will ever do it? You know what's funny? When do you I think of us as a bit of a square old country? You, no, I think, you, I think you will, because even the, the momentum has picked up very quickly. When I was here last year, we were saying among ourselves that it'll probably be another seven, eight years before hmm. Britain comes around, but then here we are having this discussion today, so, you know. Well, uh, Damien Murray, I hope it's not the seven, eight years before we speak to you again. Thank you thank very you. much for coming in. Thank you for having me. And Frank uh, D'Ambrosio, doctor, thank you very much indeed for coming. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.